Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, we have another quick video for you all. We are going to be building a 12 volt, 24 age battery pack using these sort of lithium iron phosphate cells. I have four cells in parallel and then I'll be connecting four cells in series. So, so here it's a 4S, 4P configuration because we're increasing the age. So we need these sort of cells and you need the cell holder so that it has a secure sturdy fit. And then you also need these sort of insulation sheets. Guys, if you need any of these sheets, you can get it from the website. Any of these raw materials, you could get it from the website. Now, the reason why we use these sort of insulation sheet is to give it a little more protection from short circuiting. These are barley sheets. It just goes on the positive terminal because it prevents from short circuiting between the positive and the negative terminals. So now what I have done is that I have connected all the insulation sheets and then as well as I have kept another patch of insulation sheet in between the cells, in between the positive cells, because whenever we connect cells in series, right, I don't want to give it a short, I mean, I don't want to give it any chance of short circuiting. So I did uh, double up the barley sheets and I'm going to be using these sort of nickel strips to spot weld it. And I did leave a lint end a little extra so that I could connect a balance cable on it. So I have can nickel strips like these. You need three because you're making a 4S battery pack. I can do a spot weld using the machine. I do have a spot welding machine, but in this video, we are going to cover on the DIY spot welder, which we did in the previous video. If you haven't checked the video out, I'll be leaving a link on the top. Go check that out. It's a pretty awesome spot welder. So this is the spot welder that I was talking about. This works on a 55H car battery with a relay, with a switch and two spot welding tips. It's pretty simple guys. You have to just tap on the switch, just tap on it. It'll activate the relay and you'll get an instantaneous spot weld. So let's do a spot weld. Let me just show you how good the spot welder is. I've been using this to build quite a few packs and uh, this should be maybe around like the ninth pack which, which I'm making using the spot welder. The relay seems to hold up pretty good. And one thing when you do a spot weld guys, just make sure that you align the strips correctly. Take your time and then spot weld because once you spot weld, there's no way going back because you can peel it off, but it'll still leave some residue. Just a quick tap should be fine. As soon as you tap it, it'll do a spot weld. That's it. So let me do a spot weld on all the cells and then I'll zoom it across in and I'll show it to you. The spot weld points are pretty deep, pretty solid. Uh, once you do a spot weld, it'll, it's, there's no turning back. I would certainly recommend people to use this if you're new into it and if you want to make your own spot welder for like say a small battery pack. But be cautious guys, there's a risk of injury, there's a risk of burning. Please do it at your own risk. I'm just showing you that this, there's a possibility, but do your own research before taking a leap into this. So we did do the spot weld on all the cells. Now I'll just complete the pack. If you see, I have completed the spot welds using it. The relay didn't turn on hot. It was just under normal temperature. And then what I did was I did keep some epoxy sheets on the sides. That's the main negative and the main positive, just to give it a little more extra secure fit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a Kapton tape on the sides, then epoxy sheets, and then on the top, you could just heat shrink it. So now what I did was I just completed the Kapton tape on the sides and I connected the barley sheet and then on the top I have kept the balance cable and then I'm really using a 10 amp BMS here. The main reason why I'm using just a 10 amp BMS is because the load that the person is going to run is just around like 2 amps. So here in this the 10 amp BMS gives you a separate output. There's no output from the battery. So the input goes from the battery to the BMS and then it's out. For balance cable I have used a 22 gauge wire and for main negative 
it goes to the main negative battery i have used an 18 gauge wire the same goes on the positive sides as well so the pack is pretty good pretty ready now uh you don't have to do much you just need to do a heat shrink on it and then you're good to go uh, if you put an epoxy sheet on the side you'll get a secure fit uh, but let me think about it. Let me see if it's required or not and then we'll come to a conclusion This is a 24 h 12 volt battery pack the reason I made this is because I received a requirement that a person wanted to run uh, a router and an IOT device uh, which may run which may consume around like two amps so he wanted to run it around for like eight hours but what I did was I did give him an option of getting it up to 24 age so that he gets more than eight hours. It'll be around like 12, 12 and a half hours that he'll be able to extract from it. So that's the reason why I just went with a 10 amp BMS. Uh, I'll be remitting the charge to only three to four amps because it'll be an external charger that we'll be using to charge this. So if you need these sort of battery packs, guys, you could get it from the website if you want to build your own pack you could get it from the website if you have any special requirements do uh, complete the form in the website and uh, we'll be in touch with you if you like this video do give it a thumbs up if you have any questions or suggestions do leave it in the comment section below stay tuned thank you so much for watching take care